G National Championships. Chris Bucket up in the booth with Scott and Chris. Guys, we are here for the MLG Hot Pockets pregame show, and we got a lot to talk about. We just saw the Big Flex for Halo Reach Free For All featuring our pros. Pretty cool stuff. Who won that one? Uh, we saw Hysteria win that for, or that free for all using some great shots with the DMR and some pinpoint grenades. So our Halo 3 pros showing off some skills. Scott, who also impressed you? I, I, I was extremely impressed with I got your Pistola, who didn't stay dropped out of the top two at all the for the entire 15 minutes, and then snipe down comes from seventh place to finish third. Guy's got a lot of heart. Yeah, seventh place to third place to finishing it out. Snipe down, awesome performance. Very cool stuff. Great way to kick off the weekend with Halo Reach. Now, we're going to have Halo Reach taking place all weekend long. The majority of the people here in the venue are here to play that. It's the first exhibition, which helps seeds for next year. Awesome stuff. I saw the return of Perfect Storm. Legit and nated back on the same team, teaming with Karma and Killer Jew. Can't wait to watch them later this weekend. But the real story, guys, Halo Three. Only eight teams were invited here. A lot has gone down the entire season to get to this point. And to help refresh our viewers' minds out there, we put together a little video piece for you. Let's check it out. Entering the 2009 MLG National Championships, Triggers Down stood atop the Halo 3 world, holding three of the season's four tournament titles, while second seed Straight Rip had nipped at their heels, hungry to repeat as national champion. But the championships did not go as planned for the league's titans and instead pointed to a changing of the guard as both Triggers Down and Straight Rippin failed to break the top four. The weekend's heroes were two very different squads. The quiet veterans of Team Classic, led by 2006 national champion Ghost Ayami, met up with young-blooded Believe the Hype in the finals. In the end, Believe the Hype's talent proved insurmountable as they took home the crown 6-2 and earned themselves a $100,000 check. The unlikely conclusion to the 2009 season set off a wave of team changing. Most notably, Team Instinct added Cloud from Believe the Hype and El Might Warrior from Straight Rippin. Straight Rippin acquired Heinz from Triggers Down, who was recently replaced on their roster by Neighbor. With all of these trades and more, nobody knew what to expect entering the 2010 opener in Orlando, Florida. Right off the bat, it was clear that Instinct was the team to beat. El Might and Cloud were perfect complements to the Twins' Royal Lunchbox. They cruised through the entire field demonstrating superior teamwork and communication, capping off the nearly flawless tournament with a 6-2 victory over Team Classic in the finals. The Twins finally got that elusive title that had evaded them since Halo 2, and Cloud took home the Old Spice Swagger MVP award. The biggest story after Orlando was Triggers Down swapping Pistola to final boss for up-and-comer Tots. And the flag is going to be taken, dropped into the base by Pistola. Smart play by Pistola there, dropping it off to his teammates who he knew would spawn there. Heads up play out of the youngest player from FB. Many felt this trade was the missing puzzle piece that longtime teammates Victory X and Ogre 2 were searching for the last two seasons. But there was no doubt in anyone's mind that going into the second stop of the season in Columbus, Ohio, Red Hot Instinct was the team to beat. After once again cruising to the championship match, they finally met their first true test of the season and final boss, who they had previously defeated 3-1 in the winner's bracket finals. Final boss would make things interesting putting the series within the reach before Instinct turned on the Jets to take the series and the title 6-4. Elmite's going to get number 49, Lunchbox going for 50, and, and there it is! Instinct takes down final boss. All four players continuing to go positive. Instinct, back-to-back -back champions. Status quo quietly went about their business, finishing fourth for the second straight tournament, while Demon D led Believe the Hype snagged third place. Roy and Cloud enjoyed co-MVP honors for their equally dominant performances. Fallen champions straight up and continued their subpar play in Columbus, again missing the top four. T-squared saw teammates snipe down part ways for Believe the Hype, while Legit decided to take a break from the game. T squared would be left to rebuild his team, and he did so by adding Ghost Yami, Shig, and Soldier 187. Triggers Down made another roster change as well, dropping longtime captain SK for League Stalwart, Best Man. Oh my oh. goodness. This is just a highlight reel being played in front of us, guys. Freaking fantastic Halo being played right now. The only question entering our third event in Raleigh, North Carolina was can anybody stop Instinct? Final Boss would answer this question with authority, defeating them in the winner's bracket finals and championship match to take the series 6-3 and their first title since the opening Halo 3 tournament in 2008. It would be newly outfitted Triggers Down nearly defeating Status Quo to take third place honors. Instinct's Roy played especially well in the defeat, earning himself a second straight Old Spice Swagger MVP award. Final Boss's win was momentous for Victor X, who finally got the monkey off his back after years of coming up just short. His teammate and league legend Ogre 2 became the winningest player in league history, standing one tournament above his former teammate Walshie. 
Raleigh also ensured six team spots here in Dallas this weekend. Instinct, Final Boss, Triggers Down, Status Quo, Believe the Hype, and Dynasty were all sitting pretty, barring any complete meltdowns in the last event before Dallas. What this meant for everyone else heading into Washington, D.C., our fourth stop of the year, was that they were fighting for the final two national championship spots. Eighth-ranked Straight Rippin, who added legendary Slayer Naded to the roster between events, and seventh-place Carbon needed to finish above a hugely talented pool of teams right below them. This included Warriors, Darkest Hour, Heaven and Earth, and Purgatory. The first bubble team to fall was Straight Rippin. After nearly shocking final boss in winner's bracket round three, they couldn't muster up the focus to right themselves as they fell to status quo 3-0. For the first time since 2004, a national championship would take place without Straight Rippin in the bracket. Elsewhere in loses bracket round seven, Heaven Earth met up with Warriors for an epic 11-game continuation series that would end in Warriors' favor 6-5. This win would prove crucial as Carbon plays poorly to drop to the A seed, and Darkest Hour fell short of one of the greatest underdog runs in league history, losing the final boss in the loser's bracket semifinals, taking fourth place, one spot below the third they needed to advance to Dallas. With Warriors and Carbon reaching Dallas, all eyes were focused on the three teams left in the tournament, Sugars Down, Dynasty, and Final Boss. Sugars Down reached the finals by taking out Instinct and then Dynasty, who shocked everyone by defeating Final Boss 3-0 in winner's bracket round four. It was hard to see a Final Boss victory when they came to the loser's bracket finals, already facing a 3-0 deficit to Dynasty, but they slowly chipped away at the lead and eventually won the series in the 11th and final game. Now Final Boss would have to defeat Triggers Down in not one, but two series if they wanted to repeat as champions. They would do it by a count of 3-1 in each, behind the consistent and intelligent play of Ogre 2 and Victory X, and astounding displays of raw slaying power from co-MVPs, Fear Itself and Pistola. He started the only one in position for TD. He just whipped it, and it's not going to happen. Final boss is going to wow. win it. That brings us to today, where we are looking at a final boss squad who has won their last two championship series by a tally of 12 to 5 and looks to be getting stronger by the day. They are now the team to beat here in Dallas, Right below them is a cast of veterans and less experienced players, all hungry to close out the Halo 3 era with a win and $100,000. This weekend, it's all on the line. All righty, huge props to Johnny Malera, my editor, who helped me put that video piece together. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A lot, a lot has gone on this season. Guys, I know you have a favorite story for me. Scott, tell me first, what are you taking away from the 2000 season? What's your favorite story? Mine's got to be the rebirth of Final Boss, Chris. I mean, this, these guys haven't won an event since the very first Halo 3 tournament. That was in 2008. So to see these guys come back on top really is a big thing to me. But it all started by picking up Pistola. They pick up Pistola, and instantly they don't even look back anymore. They went back-to-back -back events, and they secure their spot as the number one team coming into Dallas. Yeah, Pistola definitely the key to Final Boss's success, so it looks like. Ogre 2 finally getting back on top. Love that story. Chris, what's your favorite story from this season? Well, my story's a little bit different, Chris. My favorite story has to be Warriors and how they've come from almost relative obscurity. In the 2009 season, if you asked me who any of these players were, I'd be like, who? But right now, these guys are in the Dallas National Championships right now after strong th or three straight fifth-place finishes in the last three tournaments. I mean, these guys... They didn't know one knew who they were coming into this season, but now they're one of the most dangerous teams out here during this tournament. Dude, awesome stuff with the Warriors. Seriously, even in the first event in Orlando, if you ask me who are Warriors or who's on that team, I couldn't answer those questions. These guys, super impressive, three straight fifth place finishes and getting that performance, that amazing performance in DC to get here. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, I think that's pretty good intro so far, but we got to get to the meat of the show, which is coming up next. We are going to be talking about the first round matches. Remember, only eight teams are competing here in Halo 3 this weekend. We'll introduce you to them.